Hi all and welcome to Cowport Woodcraft. Today's video is going to be a wine rack build. I've taken the design directly from Woodworking for Mere Mortals and a link in the description below will be provided for the free plans and to the video. So after selecting my timber from my pallet wood stock, I then go over to the table saw and I use my jointing jig, which you can find a video in the link to the description below as well on building that. And I put a clean fresh edge on all the boards going to be used. For the dimensions for this you can also see all them on the plans which you get from Woodworking for May Mortals. So don't worry about the sizes as we go along because they're all provided. This is the first time I've used the jointing jig extensively to straighten up a lot of boards and it did a really good job and all the boards was perfectly square so I'm happy with the construction of that. I can vouch for it. The next thing I do is I run that clean straight edge along the fence of the table saw and then this is the final process in squaring all the pallet wood boards up. If you see a fairy arm appearing, don't worry, it's not the Bonneville Snowman. That's my daughter giving me an helping out in the shed, so cheers Lily. After a quick tidy up, I then start laying the boards out. And I'm just looking for some nice texture, some knots and the best grain match. Because it's a rustic project and I want the rusticness and the best textures to be on the top because they just add to the old project feel. I then start to measure up roughly how big the wine rack is going to be so I can cut the waste off over at the mitre so just to make the process a little bit easier when I come to thickness in the boards. I'm using the framing square here but these don't have to be uh, precisely square this is just a rough cut just to get the boards to a more workable length. I then take them over to the mitre saw and cut all the boards down. Once the boards are all cut down to the rough length, I then move over to the thicknesser. I run each board through a couple of times. I, I don't want to lose all the rusticness, so I just take the top couple of layers off just so that all the boards are the same thickness and they've got a nice clean surface. I then move over to the table saw and I set the table saw at an angle of 30 degrees. This is to put a small bevel on each of the pieces of pallet wood. I apply the bevel to both sides of the board and this is just going to add a little bit of a visual texture to the boards when the wine racks are constructed. We then move over to the workbench again and we begin the process of clamping up the boards and this is where Lily comes in again to give me a little helping hand. And this is where the glue bot comes into its own. For £16 they are quite expensive but I do think they're so much better than using an old sauce bowl. You just get so much control over where you're applying the glue and with the little red cap the end never dries over so they are quite good. Don't try not to get it on that, you know the, con the uh, edge bit that we did. That's it. He 
here you can see we use a couple of pieces of offcuts just to pack out the clamps so we don't damage the boards when clamping up with pressure. We just clamp up enough to get a nice bead of glue coming out but remembering not to over tighten as you don't want to warp the boards when they're drying. I use a small piece of card folded over just to scoop into that groove that we made when we did that 30 degree angled cut just to scoop the glue out which uh, is a lot easier than trying to force the rag into there. We then use the rag to make sure we get all the glue squeeze out off so when we stain later we don't have any patchiness. I then find the heaviest thing in the workshop which is my red toolbox which keeps all my metal working tools in and I drop that onto the toolbox to make sure we don't get any warping. After 24 hours we unclamp and we mark out for the circle. So I find the centre of the boards and then I apply a small pin into the centre with some string attached. I cut the string to length and then I tie a pencil to the end. I then begin the process of rotating the pencil around the board to make a nice clean circle. I then use a pencil just to darken the lines and touch, touch the areas up where I missed just so I can follow it better at the bandsaw. We remove the waste at the bandsaw, but remembering not to go all the way up to the line, I leave a couple of mil clearance so I can then later go over to the bench top sander and take it right up to the line and get a nice clean edge. Here you can see we're doing that and we're just rotating it round on the dish sander until we're up to the line. Remembering to keep some nice firm pressure on the board so it doesn't vibrate about. After sanding down with 120 grit, I then put a round over bit in the router and just soften the edges of the circle. I give the round over a quick hand sand with 120 grit just to smooth it over. I then begin the process of measuring up where I'm going to put in the glasses and the wine bottles. Again at this stage you don't need to worry about the measurements too much because in the free plans all the measurements are there for you and you might also want to adjust it slightly for your own wine glasses if you've got bigger glasses or you use larger bottles as I've adjusted mine slightly because the bottom of my glasses are quite wide. I then take that board over to the mitre saw and just cut it down to a more manageable length to be working on. Here you can see me working out all my own measurements for where I want my glasses and bottles to be positioned on the wine rack. I use an engineer's square just to make sure I get nice clean straight lines for where my glasses are going to slide in so I can follow that on the bandsaw later. I mark around the bottle top so I can get the correct hole size drilled out at the drill press. I 
I use the relevant hole saw bit to cut out the holes and I go through the top three quarters of the way through and then I flip the board over and go through the other side. This is so I don't get any nasty tear out on the underside. I use the oscillating sander just to clean the inside of the holes. This is a bit of a one trick pony but it really comes in handy when you get to a stage like this of the build. I use the router again to put a round over on any sharp edges on the hole of the wine rack. Next I move over to the bandsaw and I cut out the portions for the wine glasses to slide through into the holders itself. I use a drill and countersink bit to place some holes in the back of the board in order to fasten the, the rack onto the board itself with four or five screws. I then apply some glue and clamp this into place while screwing in from underneath. This is where I think squeeze clamps come into the own, where you don't need a lot of pressure but you just need a second pair of hands to hold something in position while you attach it. I then pop some screws in from the underneath just to hold it into place while the glue's drying and give it that added strength when it's loaded up with three wine bottles. After wiping away the excess glue, I then begin the process of just strengthening up the wine rack itself. I need two strips of timber to go either side of the wine and glasses holder just to give it that extra strength again when it's fully laden. So I put one baton either side of the wine rack holder and I attach this with glue and brad nails. And I use these small squeeze clamps just to hold it in position while I flip it over and use my brad nailer just to hold it into position while the glue dries. And because my brad nailer doesn't uh, fire the nails all the way home, I have to just tap them in a little bit with a hammer. After attaching the battens, I use a flush trim saw just to cut it to size. And then I use a bit of 120 grit sandpaper just to clean up the edges. Here I'm using the engineer square just to mark out where I'm going to be putting the holes to attach it to the wall later and you can see I'm just doing it just where the wine bottles are going to be positioned so when it's fully laden you're not going to see the screws attaching it to the wall they'll be hidden by the wine bottles. I then use some 240 grit sandpaper on the whole of the wine rack just to give it one last sand and then I brush off before beginning the waxing process. I'm using dark oak briar wax here and I apply it liberally and then wipe off afterwards. I leave the wax to dry for about 10 minutes and then I give it a good buff with a cloth and this leaves a nice smooth finish.
All the power tools are turned off. And I've finished for the night. Mmm, vinegar. Cheap wine. That's the project finished. Uh, hopefully the girl will from work will like it for a secret Santa gift. And I've just got a cheap bottle of Blossom Hill in there. As you can see, it fits three bottles in and four glasses. Anywhere you want. Uh, so if you've enjoyed the build today, guys, please like and subscribe. And think about sharing the channel with your friends who are into woodwork and crafts. And looking forward to the next project, uh, which I don't know what it's going to be yet. But there's a few in the pipeline. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.